Hey, another physics video. Um, I figured I would, um, you know, do some response videos to different physics videos that I think have problems. You know, that talk about this special relativity and general relativity and say things that I think are a mistake. And so this is a 60 symbols video. Why times is slower in rockets. And um, so he's basically doing the math and he's going to actually do the math out in terms of demonstrating blah, blah, blah. Um, this time dilation thing and doesn't really do the math obviously doesn't establish any speeds but anyway that doesn't matter um, so the argument is is the uh, you know that that um, you know Einstein's argument or premise was that um, you know physics is the same in all inertial references so any it doesn't matter how fast you're going physics is the same the same kind of things will happen and I don't know why that was uh, seemed to be a necessary statement to make, but yeah, I think it just totally fails. I don't, I don't think that's true at all. Um, the faster your the faster your matter is going, um, the physics of your function is going to change substantially. I have to sneeze, I believe, but we'll see. To a kind of clock, a thing called a light clock. And so instead of having a pendulum that ticks backwards and forwards, you know, one tick per second, you, what you actually have is you imagine you have a light source and a mirror. And what you do is you fire out a burst of light that goes up, hits the mirror, bounces back, comes back, and then you've got a little detector next to the mirror which says, whenever I detect some light, I'm going to send out another burst of light. All right, two big problems. This would not work as a light clock, okay? <laughs> it's just another clock. It's dependent on two surfaces where the quantum effects where um, electro where the photons are going to interact with electrons so the reflection is never pure you're you're going to have a if there's any if there's momentum in this surface then this surface is going to be um, the metabolism the atomic metabolism is going to be slowed down which is going to create a change in the response time and obviously the detector is full of electrons <laughs> and those um, you know the same effect so both of these things are going to time distort your clock. So this doesn't even work as a light clock. So they failed right there. Right. So really you've just got little bursts of light going backwards and forwards. And it's just like a pendulum clock in that sense that actually is sort of ticking backwards and forwards between them. <clears throat> so it's true, it's just like a pendulum clock in that it, again it's it's dependent on material interactions and the argument is that matter is going to be the thing that is changed by um, velocity. So you could use that to measure time. It's not a very sensible way to measure time, but it's a perfectly good way of measuring time. And whatever time you measure with this light clock has to be the same as what you measure with your pendulum clock. Or... See, ideally you want a light clock that does something where there's absolutely no interaction with matter. But somehow the clock can function without ever directly interacting with any material interference any electrons or your radioactive decay or whatever it is all right so now we need to think about what happens to such a clock so let me draw a picture of it so here we've got our light source we've got a mirror up here and we've got a little detector here so in, you know, in simple terms all you're doing is you're firing some light up there bounces back and gets detected and then you've got a little thing that says okay whenever i detect some light i'll send another pulse up and backwards and forwards between these two so first off, they didn't even bother to have the detector line up with the light, which, you know, is sort of... So they're not really dealing with these angular problems that are critical to this dissection. We'll make this distance a distance h. And if our clock's ticking, supposing its period is tau, so it, does, it takes a time tau to go from there to there and a time tau from there to, to go from there to there. So which of us is analogous to like one second on a pendulum clock? Cause I, pendulum actually only completes a period every two seconds, right? Each, it does one way for a second and then the other way for a second. So this is going to be a clock, it's probably, if we make it, you know, the trouble is if we wanted it to be a second between ticks, this thing would have to be 300,000 kilometers long, which is not terribly practical. So it's probably going to have a shorter tick, but we can write. Yeah, who cares about all this part, right? I don't think they need to add this part in. Yeah, obviously you make it relative or relevant. Um, it's a one one thousandth of a second clock. Yes, okay. One one millionth of a second. A clock. tau, if we want that h, 
in terms of the period is c times tau. So basically it's tau to get from there to there, tau to come back again, just like from a pendulum clock, one okay, second to tick, one okay, wave, okay, one second okay, to top. Yeah. And that's what would happen, you know, if I had one of these clocks sitting next to me, or, you know, if actually I was sitting in a rocket and I had one of these clocks along, along for the ride with me, that's what I'd see. But now imagine I'm watching somebody in a rocket, so I'm not moving, the rocket is moving relative to me, and they've got one of these clocks. And so they're watching it going tick tock and, and behaving in the way that we've just derived here. From the perspective of the person in the rocket, they're just seeing the light going up and down, but of course the rocket, from our perspective, is moving along, which means that the mirror is moving along and the light source is moving along, which means the light, instead of going up and down like that, is actually going like this, from our perspective. It's going up and coming down again. Okay, so from our perspective, so this again is a rocket that has to be going incredibly fast, because as he just pointed out, it's uh, not, it doesn't have a period of one second, it has a period of, you know, milli nanoseconds and such. So if I just draw that, what's happening is from the, you know, the light's emitted at some point, and from our perspective we're seeing this whole thing moving to the right, so actually what we see the light doing is instead of going straight up, we see the light heading off in this direction, hitting the mirror, as the mirror's moved to the right by the time it hits it, and then coming back down again, and of course by the time it gets back down to the detector again, the detector's moved to... Right, so this two image thing is a good way to look at this. Um, so again, this is he's talking about a rocket going incredibly fast to be able to create any effect like this. And the point would be is that he's saying that from some rational, from any perspective, what the light is actually doing is not only moving out, but it is um, acquired the same momentum as the object that's releasing it. And so that it basically has two momentums, a momentum in the up direction and a momentum in the you know, uh, and in the X direction and a momentum in the Y direction. Now we know light can't do that. Um, so it would have to somehow, somehow it would be anticipating where the mirror is going to be in the future. So you could say like, let's say if light was instantaneous, this might be able to work because you could say, okay, the instantaneous light is shooting already ahead of time. So this light coming out of here would already be shooting for a mirror that doesn't exist. And that would be the instantaneous projection of where the light would go. And we only see light that is coming from a past position that's delayed. So that's, that would be the delay in being able to see like light from Mars or something, the eight minutes or whatever it is. So it would take eight minutes for the light to get to us because it is old light. So it's old light. So that would sort of could possibly make sense. But the, the thing that breaks it is, is this angle would be incorrect then. Okay, so then all these angles wouldn't make any sense, and side angle side wouldn't make any sense, and all geometry would break down, because this angle wouldn't be, say, if it was 45 degrees, it wouldn't be 45 degrees anymore, it would be something skewed to that extra velocity. So there would be, the angle would be bent by the velocity. And we'd certainly notice that. So, that's not happening. So, the truth of what's happening here is, these are photons of light, Light does not shoot in, a, in the direction of its velocity in any way whatsoever. It does not acquire any momentum from its velocity. The light is shooting straight up, and as the mirror moves, it will miss it. it the, the light will not even be perceivable. So in theory, what's going to happen is it, it, the light, a photon goes up, the ship moves of space. So think of a checkerboard covering this whole thing. Okay, it's all checkerboarded. Then you can understand that this ship is moving spaces and, and the light is moving spaces. So there's two different directions. And then only one of those is the light going to care about. The only thing the light's going to care about is it was released in this direction. So this corpuscle of light is going to stay in that direction. And there will be no mirror. By the time it gets to the mirror, there will be no mirror. And that's the truth. The light again. And so the light, instead of going straight up and down, follows a path like that. So it has further to go. From our so this is the good part, right? So at least they get the thir further to go part correct. They just got this idea that this light is going to be able to do any of that stuff wrong. Because just like this image demonstrates, they have a reflection and the mirror is nowhere to be seen. So, so the mirror is not anywhere near the reflection. So obviously the mirror left. And what you really have is just a trail of individual photons. So the furthest photon would be here, okay? And the second one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. 
Now, none of these would be visible to anybody at all. It wouldn't be light anymore. It would just be some sort of photonic energy, okay, because it would be all disassociated. There would be no, it would have no frequency or wavelength or anything anymore. It would just be a bunch of photons, individual photons of energy. But in fact, light's gone further. But also, the speed of light is the same in every reference frame. <clears throat> yeah, see, now that's correct. The speed of light is the same in every reference frame, but again, that doesn't mean that your reference frame is allowed to go in a direction very fast and still produce something called coherent light. There's no rule that says that's possible, all right? I mean, it, you know, if you're shooting a machine gun, you know, just think of it as a machine gun and you're moving, there's no rule that says the machine gun's going to anticipate which way you're going and it's going to shoot the bullets ahead of you so that they hit the right spot. I mean, it's, there's no rule for machine guns and there's no rule for light, okay? There's just no difference. If, I shoot a, if I'm sitting on a, a flatbed train or something and I shoot a machine gun in the air, the bullets will trail. They will have a hook to them. They will not do this. They will not anticipate forward. They will just go individually straight up and they will do so you know, without my momentum having much to do with it. And so the light's got further to go, and it's travelling at the same speed, so therefore it takes longer to do it. So one of those ticks in our reference frame takes longer than it did in the reference frame in which the clock was stationary, just because the light's got further to go, and therefore it's going to take longer to do it. And we can fairly straightforwardly mathematically figure out how much longer it's going to take to do it. So let's go back to the picture again for a second. So this is still this distant H. That hasn't changed, which we've already said is equal to C times tau. That hasn't changed. That's our ticks that it would be. The light is now moving at the speed of light C. We see it moving, and it's going to take... Okay, so, again, just to, for the sake of argument, none of this stuff would be surviving the speeds at which he's illustrating. So, again, he's just illustrating something moving very fast, very, like, maybe half, three-quarters, 90% of the speed of light to be able to create these kind of angles. This thing has to be going incredibly fast. And, again, if you just think about the geometry, what's really happening is the light has to, the, the, the light is, the light can't do this. The light's going to just trail off as nothing, if it could be even produced in the first place. But, you know, because remember, the, the matter making up this, this stuff is energy already moving the speed of light, in my opinion. Um, but even, even, if, even if you didn't consider this stuff to be already moving the speed of light and that you can't give it more speed, um, you have to rearrange its matter and it wouldn't be able to produce reflections anymore, it wouldn't be able to produce light, it wouldn't detect light. Uh, the observer here, moving at that speed, again, he can't produce a light beam and then have it go to you and you see it as normal light. And you can sort of, the, the very existence, I think, of redshift sort of illustrates that truth. Because the redshift is created at the source. The source is, is moving in the same direction as the light it's producing. And so the source produces a photon, and then it produces a second photon. And by its schedule, it produced them at the proper frequency. Okay, for so let's say blue light. And, but what happened is, is that it moved before it fired that second one. So it was at a different position relative to the first one it fired. It slowed the first one down technically from its perspective. It didn't move away at the speed of light. It moved away at something slightly less than the speed of light because it's also moving, right? The, the light didn't go faster when it left. So the only possibility is that by moving very fast, I'm encroaching on the light. So when I release the next photon, it's compressed. No, it's stretched. Redshift is, com is a stretching. <clears throat> oh, that's right, because I'm going away. So I'm talking about something moving towards something. So if you're going away from it, sorry. So if you're moving away from, say, you're here, and the thing is moving away from you, and it's producing light. So it produces, it's producing the light at the right schedule. But what's happening is it produces the first blue photon here, and now it's moved away. So now the, the light has, relatively speaking, moving faster than the speed of light. Of course it's not, 
but from the relative distance perception, of course it has. It's like if I run 50 miles an hour in one direction and you run 50 miles an hour in another direction, the distance we're going to cover is going to be twice the distance we would have covered if we ran in the same direction. It's just a fact. It's going to be twice the distance. So the light is going to travel more distance before the next photon is created. So the blue light isn't going to be blue anymore because now the wavelength is longer. So it's going to be shifted towards the red side, the longer side, be merely because the frequency is pushing it out that way. So I think that the very fact that your momentum isn't part of the photons you produce, the light you produce does not have compensation for redshift. It doesn't have, it is redshifted the minute you produce it. Um, if you're moving, I think demonstrates that this is wrong. This does not happen. Um, although this math is a good illustration of what happens in terms of the the um, the slowing down of the metabolism of the matter when you're moving this fast. This 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 geometry um, certainly would be reflective of that relationship between how how much faster you're going and how much you slow down the metabolism of this clock same time t to get where it's going so the distance the light's traveled along here is the speed of light times how long it takes to get there c times t okay. and then remember this thing is moving to the right it's moving to the right at some speed v which means yeah so again this argument i'm saying that the speed of light doesn't change and they're basically saying uh, quite obviously that the speed of light does change because they're giving they're forcing the light to travel this much longer distance and you know how could it possibly travel the longer distance in the same amount of time from anyone's perspective from even this thing's perspective but I'm just saying that the idea is is that this thing is the thing that isn't detecting real time anymore so this never really happens from this thing's perspective but this thing's perspective didn't see light bounce off this mirror either so nobody saw light bounce off this mirror when something moving the speed of light shoots photons straight out they just are going to end up trailing like this and nobody's going to see anything but that effect okay if you if I fire a machine gun moving almost the speed of light the bullets are going to go up and they're going to go there like I say the first bullet's going to end up over here then the next one here and the next one here and the next one here and the next one here there's not going to be any of this stuff there's going to be no coherent light produced you can't have a momentum that fast and produce coherent light it's like if something was actually red shifted or moving away from us sufficiently fast they would create a, a photons of large enough wavelength that we wouldn't even be able to perceive the light anymore if it was light we wouldn't see it as light anymore because it's been so destructed so distorted um, and that works both ways <sighs> yeah and it's probably enough I mean I just think the red shift demonstrates this not to be true it's not an accurate way to describe the circumstance and the whole the whole effect is not something you can perceive but it's something you can understand that this matter will not be functioning normally if it's going at speed sufficient to escape a light beam in this amount of distance Okay, so this distance will not allow something, you have to be, like I said, this speed would have to be incredibly high for you to be escaping the speed of light's impact. But regardless, the point is, even if you're going like 50% of the speed of light, this light would probably end up hitting the mirror over here and then coming down over here and could never be detected anyway. Because it's always going to be behind. Because again, this is a checkerboard <clears throat> and you can't move two directions at once. You can only move up or over. You can't do this diagonal thing. <clears throat> That's the truth. Anyway, so until next time.